spend time thinking about this be still and know. I'm going to challenge you as you leave here today. What is it that you need to know more about God or what is it that he's wanting to show you? So once you've figured out how to be still, what is it that God's letting you know about him? Maybe you need comfort at that time. Right now, I really need to know a God of comfort, a God of sorrow, a God of healing. Maybe you're having some issues physically that you really have been asking God for healing for. And you need to know that even if he isn't answering it right now, that he has a plan. Maybe you're struggling with just a decision to make, or loved ones that have a decision to make, and you don't know what advice to give them. Maybe you need to spend that time asking God to show you. God is our refuge. God is our help in times of trial and in times of trouble. And Jesus said, you're going to have trouble, but take heart, because I, God, have overcome this world and all this world's trouble. Sing it through twice, number 65.
are admiring my beautiful flower today. This was made by uh, Brooke, and it was, she took a napkin somehow and twisted it all up, so fits my twisted personality. <laughs> if you join me in the back of your bulletin for all the announcements, there's a lot here, but there's a lot more. Um, as you know, we um, take prayer, time for prayer every day for the people that are listed on, on your bulletin. In, um, in addition to the people on the prayer chain, the prayer list, we ask for prayers for the family of Gaylene Grosshands. Gaylene was very well known by many of us, and she passed away on March 18th. Her services will be held on March 23rd at the Methodist Church. We would like to keep Nick, Brandon, Carrie, and Jerry in your prayers, as well as many, many, many other relatives. The Chosen Bible Study, I went to my first session. It was very good. There was 15 of us over at PUCC, so let's see if we can do a little bit better here at our church on Tuesday. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's at 1.30 in Friendship Hall. 6.30 at PUCC, sorry. And we still have those snack sets, so I'm not gonna say any further about them because you all know. Um, the crosses are done, and I think we're gonna frame them today. I brought some frames. Um, the CWF, this isn't in your bulletin, but the CWF Ladies Night, Ladies Day Out, we always have in April. This year it's on April 4th, which is, I believe, a Monday, which is an unusual day. But we're going to meet at the church at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to travel to the Holy Family Shrine near Gretna. For all of you, I know you've all seen it on the, on the side of the road as you go to Lincoln or Omaha or whatever, but we are going to visit it and share some special moments inside. And we do have two or three vehicles available for carpool. We just need to let Gene Sanderson or myself know if you'll be coming so we don't wait for someone who's not coming, okay? And like I said, there'll be more in the newsletter about that. And I'm sure there's food involved. Um, we're having a, a special on early childhood development. And I think Pat, just a minute. Okay, there's three flyers in the back, and two of them probably wouldn't really apply to us as a family, um, or your family. However, they are having a diaper drive, and that's something that we can all help with. What they're needing are um, pampers, um, I don't even know diaper products. Uh, pampers, gloves, even wipes, as much as they can get, and if the posters are back there, the most requested size in the diapers are size three to six months. They can be brought to the church from now until March 31st, and Pat and I will make sure that they get delivered to the Methodist Church or the Messiah Church. Are there any other announcements? Okay. If not, will you join me in the call to worship, which is out of my favorite hymn? As the deer pants for the water, so our souls long after you. You alone are our heart's desire, and we long to worship you. Now on page 25, we'll sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
congregational prayer printed in your bulletin. Lord, forgive us for allowing the noise and distraction of this world clutter our minds and time with you. We long for those refreshing, quiet moments where we can sit in your presence. Remind us that it is okay to just stop and allow the moments of peace to wash over us. Allow us to just be still and know. Know that you are God to know what you would have us to do. To know your commandments and to know your deep saving of love. Amen. In the midst of struggles, God is present. In times of grief, in times of weariness and tragedy, God weeps with us. When we fail to be the people we know we should, when we sin, God's grace gathers, gathers us in. God, God beckons us to live within God's unfolding realm of love. As the offering plate comes around, respond in openness to all we've been given. Place your financial offering in the plate, but also, and more importantly, place your hand over it and silently commit to God to use your gifts, talents, and heart for furthering the unfolding realm of God on earth. Would the deacons come?
Come, behold, the works of the Lord. See the desolations that has been brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And from, Matt, and from John, chapter 16, 33, it's in your bulletin. I have told you these things, Jesus says, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Thus ends the reading. Thanks be to God. All right, I got most of my kids down here. I need the rest of them. Come on down. As Marcus and Chris go, she knows. They were at the first service. These guys need a badge of honor. Come on, why don't you three come right over here in front? Come on over here. Come on, honey. Come on. Yes, it's just going to be one of those mornings, isn't it? Okay, have a seat right there. They won't bite. I already fed them, so. You sit right there anyway. Well, you know what? At the last service, we talked about being fishers of men, but I thought about fish. Do you like fish? Yeah. No. I like fish. Are they slimy? Do you like them? <laughs> yeah. I like them. Do you eat it? Yeah, I don't. You I don't. don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. The only fish that I've eaten that I like is fish that didn't taste or smell like fish. I like fish. I like chocolate fish. You like chocolate fish. Okay. <laughs> that, that would tie well, you know what? So we talked about the great catch. That was when Jesus first met Peter and, and Andrew. But guess what? The Bible has a lot to say about fish. Did you know there's another thing in there where we talk about fish? Do the boys know? See, they're, they're giving me eyebrows because they thought I was going to do the same thing. Well, there's another time we to say it when they talk about fish. And that's when a bunch of people sat on the hillside, guys. Sit down. That's when a bunch of people sat on the hillside and they listened to Jesus teach. And you know what? They were probably a little unruly then too. That's what surprised me. Because he talked a long time. He talked for three days. Would you guys pack food? Hey, would you guys pack food if you were going to sit there for three days and listen to somebody? Or would you go and be hungry for three days? I'm so sleepy. Yeah. Well, you know what? They took food. But then they just second, they ate the food. And the food was gone. And Jesus made sure that basically all the food was gone and that they were really hungry. So they weren't just hungry for the word, but their tummies were hungry. And then he does a miracle. Do you know what the miracle was? He asked if anybody had any food. And you know who had food? Just a second. Who had food? There was a little boy, just like this one coming on down. See, he knew I had some. There was a little boy who said that he had two fish five loaves. And Jesus took that and he gave thanks and he blessed it and he broke it. And you know how much fish they had? They had enough fish and loaves to feed almost 8,000 people or more. What? Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, he had enough to feed everybody, and when they were all done eating, on the half of just two fish and five loaves, they had enough to pick up for 12 baskets later. See, God's a God of miracles. God can make the impossible possible, just like we talked about the be still and know. He said, when there's times of trouble, don't worry, because God's got this. He's going to fight our battles, and he's going to give us food when we're hungry. And so, obviously, I could tell that you guys were pretty hungry. So I have some fish. And I multiplied it. Now, now the little boy shared in her story. And so these guys already got theirs earlier, but so I don't have any for them right now. So maybe when you get downstairs, maybe you can be nice. And you can share a little bit with Chris and Marcus, okay? Come on, sit up. All right, why don't you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father,
Father, we thank you so much that you just continue to amaze us with your provisions. You protect us, you guide us, you are victorious for us, and you provide food for us. We ask that you would bless these fishes and that they may be food for our soul as well as our tummies. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. We're going to say a prayer for Linda as she takes them downstairs. <laughs>
and know God. God can talk to us while we're sleeping, but what can we actually learn from God when we're sleeping? Not a lot. As we found out in Psalms 46, it wasn't talking about sleeping, was it? But be still and know is at the end of that chapter. After God is talking, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in when trouble. He's talking about this whole thing is about warfare. And the be still and know is twofold. One for the enemies to let them know that God's in control and he's got this. And the second is for the Israelites to know that God is in control. <laughs> and he's got this. He's their refuge. He's their help in struggle. What did Jesus say in John? He says, in this world you'll have what? Trouble. He doesn't say, once you accept me, once you take me in your life, it's going to be a bed of roses and you're never going to have a problem. He says, on the contrary, you're going to have a lot of problems. But take heart. Because since you have me, I have overcome the world. I have overcome your troubles. I have come, overcome your anxiety. It's really where Psalms is getting at at the end of this. This is he makes wars to cease. Only God can cease wars. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Those are very comforting words, aren't they? Well, be still and know I'm God. What is there to know? There's a lot to know. And the older you are, the more you know you don't know anything, right? It's kind of like my Hebrew class. The more I learn, the more I don't know nothing. <laughs> I come to the conclusion I'm probably not. But that's okay, because it's the hungry. It's the spending that time of being still, of quieting yourself, to learn what God has to show you, to learn what God has to teach you, to learn what God has to instill on your heart that you can share with others. On the chosen that we're doing this week, we, actually we did it last Tuesday, uh, this Wednesday we'll be at the PUCC, we're a week behind. But it's on Shabbat. And it gives us a chance to see the difference of how they celebrate that day of quieting themselves. Do you remember as you were growing up as a kid, how many things were open on Sunday? Nothing, right? You had to be prepared. If you needed something, you had to go to the grocery store on Saturday. Because if you were short on Sunday, tough. You had to prepare and fill your car up with gas. Because if you were going somewhere, most places were closed. You couldn't get gas to get back home. You didn't have to worry about working because every place was closed unless you were a nurse or a doctor or a vet or any place where you could get called in. Boy, how things have changed. Now we're all going, going, going. And are we even remembering the Sabbath, let alone keeping it holy? See, there's a spot as we're going to continue to look throughout the episodes of The Chosen. Jesus seems like he's always going against the Pharisaical tradition of healing people on the Sabbath. How dare he? How dare God, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, do something good on the Sabbath? Because man said otherwise. And what does Jesus say? Sabbath was not, man was not created for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was created for man, right? Just like God didn't have to rest, he did it as an example so that way we could follow. But even Jesus said, who any of you, if your donkey's fallen into a ditch on the Sabbath, will not go and rescue him? What more then should not the Son of Man heal this man's withered hand who's been in infirmary for his whole year, his whole life? <coughs> See, that's what's being holy about the Sabbath. Doing good. Being still and listening to God's voice. If you were to leave here today and you were to see somebody on the side of the road that needed help, what better way to keep the Sabbath holy than stopping to help? Right? Even if it's just a phone call, I mean, they borrow your phone. How about if you know that somebody is sick and hasn't eaten for a while? 
and you decide to take some food over to them. That's remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy. I think the irony here that I thought about earlier was the parallel between Jesus and, and God in this whole wrestling with the Pharisees. God is the God of the Sabbath. Jesus is God. Yet the Pharisees are telling God what he can and what he can't do on his own day. Wow. We get caught into that trap too, don't we? Telling God what he can and what he can't do with what he's created. So as we spend time thinking about this, be still and know, I'm going to challenge you as you leave here today. What is it that you need to know more about God, or what is it that he's wanting to show you? Maybe the first thing might be just learning to be still. And that doesn't mean you have to just sit in a chair. I know for me, the best way that I, I hear God is when I'm working, but I mean, not like mentally thinking. That's why I love to paint. I, mean, I was a house painter. I came up with my best sermons when I was painting because it was kind of a no-brainer for me, you know? I didn't have to think about so much what I was doing. For others, it's woodworking. Some is knitting. If you've gone places and in church, it doesn't make me upset at all when people bring their crocheting or their knitting or stuff because that's how they listen and how they hear and how God speaks to them. So once you've figured out how to be still, what is it that God's letting you know about him? Maybe you need comfort at that time. We have three people over at the BCC that just lost loved ones. Right now, they're needing to know a God of comfort, a God of sorrow, a God of healing. Maybe you're having some issues physically that you really have been asking God for healing for. And you need to know that even if he isn't answering it right now, that he has a plan. Maybe you're struggling with just a decision to make, or loved ones that have a decision to make, and you don't know what advice to give them. Maybe you need to spend that time asking God to show you. God is our refuge. God is our help in times of trial and in times of trouble. And Jesus said, you're going to have trouble, but take heart. Because I, God, have overcome this world and all this world's trouble. So know that. And just be still. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, um, I want to thank Pat for the offertory as a deer. I love that song. And I wrestled with having that be one of our, our hymns today. And I thought, oh, I'll have it be the call to worship. But just that song, how can you not be still and rest in his presence when you hear those words? As I said, we have three people. We have the Rose Hands, we have the Whiteys, and we have Pickerings, the just lost loved ones. We want to keep them in our prayers. I know that there are many that are struggling right now with illness or injury that we want to lift up. Are there others that I don't know about? Okay. If you would bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we thank you for this wonderful Shabbat. We thank you for the words that are said by every Hebrew Shabbat Shalom, which means peace, peace on the Sabbath. I know there are many right now that are wrestling to find peace and comfort. Thank you for that ever-present reminder that you are the God of peace, that you see and seek out each and every one of us. You seek out the very deepest corners of our heart and you heal them. You bring strength you bring victory. And that is how we can be still. Thank you for reminding us of that. And we thank you so much of your son who came to teach us these wonderful things. To feed us not just with earthly food, but also with the spiritual food of what would last for an eternity. 
And we thank you for the prayer that he taught each and every one of us to pray. If you would join with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We come to Christ's table. The invitation is open to all. All who call on his name, Lord and Savior, are invited to come and partake as the body of Christ. Jesus sat with that first body, his friends, that night of Passover. Only this night of Passover, when he lifted up the bread, <laughs> He gave thanks to God, the King of the universe, and he asked him to bless the grain of the field. And as he broke it, he said, this is now going to be my body, which is broken for you. Every time you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. As we know, Jesus is the bread of life. And then he lifted up the cup, and he gave thanks. Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe. Blessed be the fruit of the vine. He said, this is now going to be a new covenant, a covenant between myself, which will be my blood, that will be poured out for the forgiveness of all sin. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so, as the body of Christ for over 2,000 years, we come before his table, eating of the bread, drinking of the vine, remembering Christ's life, his gift, his death, his resurrection, and proclaiming to all that he is coming back. Amen. If you would join with me in our next hymn, I love the title, it's page 39. Be still and know. We're going to do the first and the third verse.
to, and your invitation to participate as disciples. As we drink of this cup, our affirmation of our faith, draw us into a bit of being better serving you, the living God. We pray in the name of the one who came as a servant to all, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Peace. 